Okay, so we are going to start with something really simple or simple advices for a start to strengthen the core. And before to start, I have here David, my model is perfect model because he has super tight neck and low back. And the reason is because more tight is the neck, more tight is going to be the low back because it's almost like a mirror to each other. If you see, the back of his neck is really short. And by being laying down like this, his muscles are contract, try to hold the head. So before we start anything, we want to align this neck in neutral. For that one, I would use the help of a yoga block or you can fold a towel. I will lift. And if you see now, he has the yoga block under his head. You can see his neck now is more in neutral. He's able to link a little bit more the back of the neck. So the chin has to be over the throat natural without over flex the neck. We want to have the head and the ears more parallel to the ground. As soon as we have the neck in neutral, now the neck is supported. We will have the opportunity by gravity and body weight to the muscles of the back of the neck start to relax. Because we want them to start to relax, to stop to overwork here, so we can be able to access the low back. Now, he has right now, is he's laying down, his arms on the side, his left elbow, he cannot extend completely, so only for uh, you know that. So we'll, he will try, or you will try to keep the both arms next to the body, and you will see here another disalignment. The shoulders cannot come down. Okay, and that is part of the problem that his neck is tight because we cannot, we need to stretch a little, a little bit more the pegs in the order that he will be able to keep the shoulders in the right alignment in neutral. Before we start to move anything here, we are going to start with the low back. So we are going to imagine in between the belly, pubic bone, and the hips, there is a diamond. And inside the diamond, there is like a Marvel. So if he will create in between his finger, he's going to do that for me, thumb and index uh, together, and he will put the thumbs on the belly, a little more lower, and the index on the pubic bone. And we will imagine we have a marble in the center. So we will start you with regular breathing through the nose, and part of the breathing can help you to strengthen the muscles of the core. So right now, he is maintaining his diamond parallel to the ground, and he will start to inhale through the nose to do some cleansing breath. And we let to come the air not only on your inside his lungs, expanding to the side, but let it go all the, that air coming inside all the way to the diamond. And then when he exhale, imagine all the muscles pulling in and up. Your ribs start to make it smaller, by pulling the obliques to the center line of the body, and in between the lips is slightly open, he, he will let it go any stress out. And if you see as soon as he starts to use right now this cleansing breath, he can access better that deep muscles of the core. So all the muscles when inhale is going to inflame, inflate like it's a balloon, and the inflate like it's pushing all, or the inflating that balloon. Now he will lift the lips together, keeping that connection of that with the pulses of the core, he will start to use only the nose. More he can exhale and push out the stale air, more capacity he can create for inhale. As soon as he got, got that deep breathing, next time he inhale, he will try to roll the marble to the pubic bone. For that is the opposite. The belly go higher, so the thumbs go higher than the pubic bone. And when he exhales and start to, in, to exhale completely the air, he will imprint the low back against the mat. So the diamond is going to move to the pubic bone deeper and lower than the thumbs. And then when he exhales, will be the opposite side. The hips or the pelvis remain on the mat. If you start tilting the pelvis, this is a clockwork. So imagine that the, be the belly is the 12 and the pubic bone is the 6. After a couple of them, he will imprint the low back lower than the pubic bone. So all the low back is pressing the mat and we'll keep it like that. And we we'll continue breathing. Put the arm next to the body. And now we are going to do something named knee folds. For that, it's really important that David is using here the 
Sep tall separator, he lose one of the sides. I will try to put it back so the tongue is separate. You can do without, if you do with them, it's going to be more accessible to you can move correctly. So start with the legs, preferably together, and imagine that you have like a very, very uh, sticky uh, glue under the feet, or like a kind of like a bubble gum. He will start to keep imprinting the low back and start to pick the heel off of the mat, only of the right foot, only the heel pick, and then start to pick the arch off of the mat, only the right, you see it's having a, a trouble to do that. Now the toes, and keep pointing that foot and start to pull the right knee to your chest. Keep him pointing the foot, the more that he can, and keep pointing that foot, start to bring down first the toes, then the arch, then the heel. Legs are in the center. Again, we lift the heel only, then the arch, then the toes. Keep pointing the foot, pull the knee to your chest. Nothing move, only the thigh bone glide inside the hip socket. And now we start to move first the toes, then the arch, then the heel. He will do by himself. Heel are toes, pull the knee to your chest, and bring down your toes are heels. Opposite foot. Left heel, arch, toes go up, knee to your chest, and bring down your toes, are heel, keeping imprinting the low back the full time. Now heel again, left foot, arch toes, and bring down your toes, arch heel. One more time, heel, arch toes, knee to your chest, toes, are heel. We develop first that the strength with the legs uh, alternated. If it's possible and that don't bother the back, he will try to do both at the same time. Now there is something very important. The most of the people we want to push with the foot, with the feet, the legs up, and it's not pushing the feet, it's pulling from the lower abs because we are trying to strengthen the pelvic floor. So now he will do it slowly, lift only together at the same time the heels, the arches, pointing your feet to your toes and pull from the lower abs, keep imprinting the low back, bring first the toes, then the arches, then the heels, again, peel the heels, our toes, pull the knees to your chest, and bring back again your toes, your arches, and heels. Let's do one more time, heels, our toes. This exercise, name knee folds, and stay with the knees there. Now, keeping the knees to the chest, no 90 degree angle on the hips, we want to bring them in the chest, so you have to activate more the lower back. He will move only the right leg, and try to bring down the toes, our heels, and peel again, heel our toes and lift. Alternate with your legs, heel our toes, and toes are heels, both together. Come down both together, imprinting the low back toes, and now leave the heels, our toes pulled. Again, now put the left first, left first, toes are heels, peel, heel our toes. The other side, bring down the toes are heels, heels are toes. Both legs, point your feet, bring down your toes are heels, and bring the heels, our toes, ready for the death book. Keep the knees to your chest. If it's necessary to give a little bit of help, you can put your hands there. Extend the arms to the sky. Now move your shoulder blades apart of the mat and towards the mat three times. You use for kind of put oil in that shoulder blades. Keep your shoulder blades down, okay? And now we are going to give a little break for we move only the arms, bring your toes, hard heels down and let you just move the elbow inside the shoulder socket and find that differentiation. Keeping the collarbone open, you are going to glide the elbow inside the shoulder socket, bringing the arms down towards the mat, shoulders stay down, and bring the arms up to the ceiling. And again, glide the elbow inside the shoulder socket, and it's time you reach to the ceiling, try to go a little bit back, keeping the shoulders away of the ears and the neck longer, and bring down again, and exhale, and inhale and try to move them a little more over, keeping the shoulders down and imprinting the low back. Nothing move, as everything stay here down because you are strengthening that abs and pelvic floor. Now next time the arms are next to your, over the chest, keep it there. Now we start to peel again the heels, arch toes, pull the knees to your chest, keep the knees to your chest, and now we do the dead bog. So for the dead bog, he's going to move the right arm over the top, and the left knee flex, try to tap with the toes the ground. Right arm, left toes, 
and now bring to the center, and now with the other. And remember, this elbow, he cannot extend. Now I can alternate it, the arm can stay over, and then the other side, the other side, and you don't have to move this arm. <laughs> you, already <lose> that. <laughs> you already lose the balance. Okay, let's try again. Right knee to the floor, left arm to the sky, to the other side of the room and bring back to home. Now, left, right arm to the other side, left foot down and bring back to home. Now he got it. And then yes, and always reach into the ceiling and the other side and do it slowly, no rush. We want to control, you don't have to move this arm forward. You just keep over the chest. And now bring down because he already lose the, the rhythm. <laughs> okay, so now, we are going to continue moving that hips, keep imprinting that low back, the abs are still active. And we are going to glide the thigh bone now externally, so the knees open out like a butterfly ring, wings, feet are, fly, are facing each other. Now when you close the knees, your feet go flat on the mat. And again, open to the side and close them, exhale. And open to the side and close them, exhale. And let's do one more, next time you close your knees, Peel the heels, our toes, and bring the knees to your chest. Now here, we do the same. If you need to help with the support because the back hurt, I will put my hand here on the heel so he can do again the butterfly wings. Open and close, keeping the knees in the air. If I see that he has the strength to maintain the knees there, I will move my hands out of the way. And now we are going to move them, keep the knees together. We are going to move the knees apart and tap and bring back to the center and we tap and now ready, we are going to do a combination of both. He opened the knees apart, he tapped down, he closed the legs together and he pulled it in. I am giving support here, open the knees and bring them down together, close the knees like you are doing circles. I will let it go and he will do. Open and around and close. And one more in this direction, ready, reverse. Stay down, open and lift. Come down together, open, lift and close. I will let it go and he will do by himself. Remember, you have to come down together, down together, open, his coordination is not very good, and lift and close. Let's do one more time, and open, and lift and close. He's going to roll to the device on his side. I will remove this, and he will do double clamp. So he will put one hand on each ear, and he will close the knees together and the elbows together. No, put your hands, cover your ears with your hands. No, with your hands. Now bring the elbow down on the ground. Yes, like that. So he will have these double clamps. Elbows are touching each other. And he will open, keeping the body on the side. So I will put some support in his hips and low back so he doesn't move. He will open the top knee and the top elbow and follow with your eyes the top elbow looking back, staying on your side. And now he's going to close again the double clamp. Open double clamp, close over double clamp. Open double clamp and close. Now the knees don't move, keeping the knees even, he's going to open the top clamp. And this time that elbow is trying to reach, look the elbow, for, so the head go looking for that. Look with your eyes this elbow, David, and look back. And keep looking back to try to open, to stretch your ribs, you stretch your chest and stretch the neck. And now he's going to close. I am putting my hand here because I am giving support and checking that he stay one hip over the other and he keep one knee on the other and close. Open that clamp and close. Let's do two more. We are going to do five of this side. When we finish the last one, he will keep these clamps. Uh, the top hand is going to come on the mat in front flat with elbow 90 degree angle, like a break or like an anchor to stay on the side. And now the upper body don't move. I will put my hand in between his shoulder blades so he don't move the upper body. And he will open the top thigh bone, keeping the hips still. I am pushing my, the hip to stay on the side and close the clamp. Open the clamp and close the clamp. Open the clamp and close the clamp. Now, he's going to lift the top leg at the level of the hip Keep the, keep the legs parallel, and he will kick with the knee to try to touch the elbow, keeping the back straight with the arch, and now that knee is going to move back, keeping the hip still to stretch the quads, and he's going to kick to the front and kick to the back, and kick to the front and kick to the back, 
Tomorrow I will let him go so he can do right. And the last one, he's going to extend the leg back and keep the hip over the other and gain support so he don't move. And he will move the thigh by moving down and tap, point your foot, down and tap behind the mat, down and tap behind the mat, activating that glute. One more time. Now, extend the leg back and extend the top arm forward in diagonal. Stretch, lift the arm up to the, in the air. Extend, so he, this is the elbow he cannot extend, but you will extend the elbow. So we, he will find that lengthening with the arm in one direction, leg in the other direction. Now bend the elbow, bend the knee, put your knees together. Now, for effect of the screen, he is going to turn around to the other side, but you can just roll, don't have to stand up like David. You can just roll and do the same on the other side. So he's going to do the double clamp again, put your hands covering the ears, elbows together, knees together, lay down on your side. We want to do a straight line from the crown to the seat bones. Now, keeping on the side, I will give support to the hips and to the back. The goal is no support and stay on the side. Open the double clamp. Open knee and elbow. Elbow two, look back, look back, follow the top elbow, and now bring down back to come. Always the eyes follow the top elbow, keeping on your side and close. One more time, double clamp and close. Two more, inhale, open. Exhale, close, keeping the neck longer, move the neck more back, David, so you are straight on your neck and are close. Now the knees don't move, one on the top of the other, only the elbow on the top. Open the top clamp, look back to the wall behind you, close, keeping the neck straight, bring the neck a little, the head a little more back. And again, open the clamp out and close the clamp in. And inhale out, exhale and in. Let's do the last one. You stay on your side. The top arm is going to be the anchor. Put your hand parallel to the breastbone. Be sure the elbow is in 90 degree angle. You can continue flexing and lay down here on your side. You can always, I didn't do that variation. You can even put like a kind of, of uh, Below, under, so the neck will be straight. Bring the head a little more back. Oh, yes, there, now you are straight. Now we are going to do again the top clamp. Remember, this is the elbow that you have a little bit of problems to flex completely. We are going to open the top knee, keeping one hip over the other. So I am giving here support. Again, the goal is he will do without me supporting. He has to get the strength and the mobility in that hip. Now, the top leg and top knee go to the level parallel of the top hip. And now pointing that foot and keeping the heel close to the booty, kick to the elbow, keeping the straight back and kick back behind. And kick to the elbow and we move so he can move a little more back. And we can do that stretch on these squats. I will let him not go and we'll support the hips so stay. But remember this has to be without me supporting him. And now he's going to extend back. The goal is he can maintain completely uh, the isolation with his core. And he's going to tap. Think about the sit bones get closer to each other so the hips are more lower. Now next time you are up, keep kicking back. The top arm, keep extend forward in diagonal. So you are doing a diagonal in between the arm and the leg. With the le arm at the level of the hip. Now we are going to bend the knees. He's going to go in his belly. Only this don't bother your back. We are going to thoracic extension. Okay, this is really important, the extension, because it's part of the mobility of the spine. But if this hurt the back, then stop here and do the exercise for the hips and feet that I already sent to you. Otherwise, here on his belly, he put one hand on the top of the other. His forehead is on that hands. And he will press the top of the feet. When you don't have too much mobility, this can cause sometimes some uh, like a cramps in the foot, but that is normal because it's the, the, the bottom of the foot gets very weak, more in guys, because they never use high heels. And the knees are going to be in the air. Press the pubic bone down and try to narrow the spacing between the seat bones, get them together and the abs in and up. We do first transverse lifting so he's, I will put my hand in his lower back to give the direction to pull him as away of the mat, nothing move, the head stay down, nothing move, 
Only the abs get up and pull to the ribs. And now let it go, inhale. Exhale, pull them in and to the ribs. This is almost like a breathing under. Now keep them pulling down, in and up. And now he's going to glide the ribs through the hands and they start to peel off of the mat, the head and the ribs pressing the arms down and then they start to come down further ribs, then the head at the end. Again, glide the ribs forward, scoop the abs and peel further ribs in the head, come down the ribs first, sorry, you peel the head first and the ribs as high as possible, come up and then bring down the ribs at the end, the head again. Now next time he is up, he's going to do neck rolls, keeping the shoulders longer, you are a turtle, move the neck away, look to the device, and now do a circular round away of the device, look to the front, look away of the device, roll around, look to the front and come down to come. We put the hands next to your chest and we go back into a shell pose. So he sit back and here sitting back with the arms extended in the air, I will put my hand again in between his ribs and his hips and he will push the abs there so the back go around. And one last one, again, these last exercises, if that bothers your back in the extension, you just skip that, you are going to go into a tailbow top. I will put under the left hand of David the block because this arm, his, this arm is shorter. So we want to have both arms wrist under the shoulders, keep under the knees, go a little more forward the knees, David. Yes, there, now he's in a tailbow top. So he will start, use with the cat, and the cow is optional. For the cat, he start from the neck rounding, separate your shoulder blades, sinking the chest to the ceiling, rounding your back and bring the tailbone in between your legs. Now, the legs stay over the knees and start to extend from the tailbone, then the ribs, retract the scapula, they move to the center and he looks forward. If this arching hurt, you just go back to the tailbow top, okay? Now bring the head in between, separate your shoulder blades, pull the abs to the ceiling, keeping the shoulders over the wrist, tailbone down. Now inhale, start to roll from the hips, upper back, middle back, up, uh, up, lower back, middle back, upper back and head. Now start with the head, upper back, middle back, lower back, exhale there completely, inhale and unroll the spine. Now find the center when you are not cat, you are not cow, both hips move sideways to the right, he's going to look over the right shoulder, so this is going, the knees stay over, you use the hips move sideways. Now the hips move to the other side and he will try to look over the other shoulder. So when the hips move to the right, that side is smaller and the other side is longer. When he sits to the other side, it's the opposite. Now stay in the center, straight like a plank, and then we are going to do the four points together. He start inhaling, arching the back. Remember the arch, arching is the cow pose. If this cow pose is not available, you do tailbow top. Now look to the right hip, moving the right hip to the side, and now catch your back, rolling the spine up. Now look to the left and back to the tailbow top of the cow. And again, to the right, exhale, cat. Don't move the hips behind the knees, keep the hips over the knees. One more to the right, and cat. And left, don't move the hips back, David. It's not shell pose, keep the shoulders over the grease. Now we are going to do the other side. Move to the left, keep the knees over, run your back to the ceiling instead of moving back. And now to the left, keep the knees over, the, the, the hips over the knees, and now cut your back. Don't move the hips. I will put my hand in his butt so he use the motion here. Cat is the spine movement. Now right, and then cow. And again, left, cat, right, and cow. Beautiful. He will put his right leg forward in between your the hands in a lunge. And now in this lunge, if it's uncomfortable for the knee on the ground, be my guest to put a pillow there. Lift the chest up, bring the chest up, hands off. And now he will wiggle in the leg in the back. And he can put both hands on the knee, in the front knee, and then start to move all your body in circles around, wiggling the knee in the back in one direction. It's really good for open the, the hip flexor and the piriformis. Now circles in the opposite direction, but with intention to go around. Now stay there, 
If it's possible, this foot come in and he will wiggle again, circles in one direction and now circles in the opposite direction. Then he will bring back the foot, kneel, and he will switch legs. So put the knee down first, and then the other, remember to put a pillow if necessary, keeping right now parallel, this foot is parallel with the knee, I will accommodate here. He will wiggle the hip and the knee, so it's around a little more back if it's possible. He's a little bit, no, <laughs> I put too much. <laughs> In what direction? That's my bad side. And then the other direction. That is the th his tight hip. Now stay in the center, still is 90 degree angle there, there, and the foot is going to go in, and now he will wiggle again, first in one direction, you can see this, he has more restricting the mobility in the hip, and now the other direction. And circle, round in the corners, and as soon as he's ready, he put the foot first back, and he can stand up. Last stretch on the wall, he will go against that wall. I will turn a little bit the screen and he will rest the back in that wall. The feet are going to be a couple inches in front, forward and parallel, more, even more, David, more, more, more. And then you will know how more you need to do, it's depending how tight is the neck, more forward, you will give more space to the hips to move more, the ribs more, more back and even the neck. Here his neck cannot go all the way back, it's okay. He will try to maintain the neutral. The shoulders, the more back that he can. He's going to extend the arms to the side like an like a angel on the snow and he's going to close them down. And all the back, the low back is pressing the mat. So in that way he starts to stretch here his chest. Can you feel that stretch, mm -hmm. David? Mm -hmm. And now he's going to stay in capital T. Remember this elbow, he cannot extend completely. And he's going to flex the elbow like a cactus. And if you see, it's hard for him to put it back because this is really tight, okay? But he will maintain all the spine there, keeping the elbow like a cactus. He will rotate the arm going in internally so the palms come down and externally the palms go back, keeping the wrist still. He will rotate all the arm bone inside the shoulder socket, keeping the elbows parallel to the ground. And now he's going to extend the arms and bring the arms back to home to the side of the body. And like it's behind him, there is Velcro. He will start to lengthen the back of the neck and bring the chin to your throat. Peel the head first, then start to peel the upper back, back forward. Peel the middle back, the arms are hanging next to the, each other. He's going to peel the lower back so the arms stay down, the hips stay there, and the abs are in and out because he's like a cat. And keeping the head, hands hanging, the arms hanging, he's going to start to do with both arm circles in one direction, first with momentum, and then let it go and let the momentum and the gravity do the circles, then the opposite direction. Now keep the arms hanging, the arms always going to follow that shoulder. Right now your scapulas are, are protract apart. With the abs start to pull the lower back, that back, the middle back, the upper back, keeping longer the neck over the ribs, lengthening the back of the neck. He's going to exhale again and first flex the neck, upper back, middle back, shoulders are retract, protract, upper back, the hips stay there and tailbone, and again he's going to do circles, first with momentum, first with the movement, and then let it go for the momentum, then the opposite direction, keep the head heavy, scoop the abs, and pull from the abs, the lower back back, then the middle back, then the upper back, at the end the neck keeping longer in the back, one foot go back, Step back one foot and stand up, and he's ready to go. Bye-bye.